I see spirituality, you know, this may be quite narrow in some people's in some people's um, view, but I see it as as this this axis of living in thoughts, concepts, abstractions, and coming through into leaving that behind and falling back into just being. And so when one has experiences in psychedelic, they can strip back the concepts and reveal what's underneath. And it's the reveal, it's the thing that's revealed that I think is the the stuff that's the um the kind of fruit of the psychedelic experience spiritually. Um and it's the thing that if one hasn't experienced it, why people might find it a bit baffling that someone has a psychedelic experience and says it revealed something important to them because they assume all that happens is there are additional hallucinations. You know, you're your ego and then you have additional hallucinations. And if you think you don't exist anymore, it's because the ego has had a strange thought that it doesn't exist. Not that the concepts have been stripped away and the reality actually isn't how they thought it is underneath, which is, you know, actually what, what seems to be going on. So the thing is, is that psychedelics, they co-evolve, you know, psychedelic plants, if we talk about mushroom and cacti, they co-evolved with us. And this, it seems there would have had to be some evolutionary function that was good for, say, the mushrooms in taking these, you know, these primates that were pulling away from nature and starting to dominate it in the way we were with agriculture, perhaps, that was the kind of time when it was useful evolutionarily for the mushroom to try and rein in our ego. You know, there could be many reasons that these things evolved. But my point is that it, they probably didn't evolve to be pure carriers of some kind of spiritual insight, you know, pure um, chemicals that could just hack into the precise part of the brain, you know, that might say the default mode network and turn it down and give you these experiences they clearly you know at low doses fingers trailing that clearly is not a spiritual experience that is not more true about how reality is um although in the sense that it shows you that your your hand as it appears in consciousness isn't the same thing as the hand in the world that could be an insight but um but the actual experience itself is not you know substantive as a kind of spiritual experience and it seems that the whole serotonin system in the brain, you know, it's an active area of research as to what the serotonin system is actually kind of doing, what how it's best kind of understood. But it seems that it might be because it has this ability to change how strongly we hold on to concepts, which are a kind of form of model. They're a form of um, kind of simulating some, you know, a symbolic picture of, of the world. Given they seem to you know, serotonergic compounds like psychedelics seem to modulate how strong you, you grip onto your model. Like my hand is here and it's not here. And, you know, when you take a psychedelic, you might get the trailing because the model is held to less tightly. One way of understanding the function of serotonin in general in the brain is that it might be an uncertainty signal or perhaps a certainty signal. We don't really know um, as neuroscientists at the moment, you know, which way it's going to go, but people are exploring both of these possibilities. Um, you can always get kind of paradoxical effects or flipping effects with all of these neuromodulators at, at different levels. A lot of them, yeah, change their effects with, with dose size. But it seems that it might be modulating how certain you are of your models of the world. And so you can see from that perhaps that they open you up to false beliefs. You so I, the part of the reason I hold on to the model of spirituality as the stripping back of concepts and beliefs and abstractions is you can't really go wrong there. You're moving away all the things that can get you trapped in suffering and delusion and bring you closer to the way reality really is beyond concepts. You might have feelings of profound deja vu or premonitions or, you know, feelings of telepathy, you know, harming, um, it's one of the chemicals in ayahuasca. And when it was first named in the West, it was called telepathine, I believe it was. But the telep part is from telepathy because it was so widely reported that people claim to be having these telepathic incidents. Um, at the moment, that kind of thing, I suspect, is in the domain of false beliefs that happen under psychedelics. You're playing with the brain's ability, it's how, um, how it builds models of the world. And perhaps it's kind of detecting patterns 
that aren't meaningful and applying meaning to it. I'm open to being wrong, but I, that's where I'm, uh, where I'm at with that stuff. Um, people can, should absolutely do experiments to, to prove that it shouldn't be based on some kind of scientific dogma that telepathy can't possibly exist. Um, if it show, if people can show it, then that'd be wonderful. Um, but so I see those kinds of experiences as soon as you can, as soon as you try to, to build up beliefs and concepts and narratives about what happened, that's when you're in the danger zone. And that's when these experiences to be an authentic spiritual insight, in my opinion, a good kind of measure of that is whether it's easy to put into words, because the whole point of it is that it happens in a state beyond words and concepts. 